and assume the responsibility as member National Political Committee of the Labour Party. I do so only and sincerely swear before the members of the Labour Party that I will observe, uphold, and defend the Constitution of the Labour Party and the Constitutional Republic of Nigeria, and solemnly and sincerely promise that I will always promote all that I can as a party and a republic and oppose all that may harm them. That's the swearing-in ceremony of the Transition Caretaker Committee of the Labour Party. Remember, a stakeholder meeting was held in Abia State on September the 4th, which produced 29-member Transition Caretaker Committee. This committee is saddled with the responsibility of repositioning the Labour Party, conducting an expansive convention. You also have to recall that the Julius Aburin led National Working Committee of the Labour Party tenure has expired on the 6th of June 2024. So from that 6th of June till when this transition committee was inaugurated by the Labour Party stakeholders, there was a lacuna in the Labour Party leadership. It means that the Labour Party was rudderless, the Labour Party does not have a leader and there is an implication to that which means that if nothing is being done, INEC would have deregistered the Labour Party because no party exists without a leader. And it also makes me to wonder why Abure was even bent on continuing with whatever he was doing, knowing fully well that this would have led to the deregistering of the Labour Party. It shows that Abure does not even concern himself about the success of the Labour Party. All Abure was concerned about is power and whatever he was going to get from the Labour Party even if the Labour Party disintegrate, where it shows that he was playing to a script. But thank God for the vision of Alex Oti and Mr. Peter Robey that called for this stakeholder meeting. That timely intervention from Mr. Peter Robey and Alex Oti saved the Labour Party from being deregistered by the Independent National Electoral Commission. On two occasions, INEC have shown that they do not regard the Julius Abure led National Working Committee of the Labour Party by not recognizing them in the political meetings that is being held in the INEC office. On two occasions, they've walked out Julius Abure when he attended the um, political meetings in INEC office. And I'm wondering why Julius Abure was really doing most of those things. Knowing fully well that he called himself a lawyer, he should have known the position of the law. But where that is over, because we have a new look of the Labour Party that is being led by our amiable Nenandi Usman from Kaduna State. She is in charge of this Ketika committee and they are saddled with the responsibility of conducting an expansive convention. This convention, like I've said previously, is going to start from the world level to the state level and the national level. Ever since the election was concluded, Abure has committed several things against the Labour Party. One of such things is that he almost jeopardized the election of Olumide Abata of the Labour Party in Edo State. Remember, there's an election coming up in Edo State on the 21st of September, and the Labour Party has a chance of winning that election. But Abure almost jeopardized that election of the Labour Party winning that election in Edo State. He submitted a list containing the names of agents that will be working for the Labour Party in the Edo State gubernatorial election too. INEC, but INEC rejected that list because according to them, Julius Aburi is not the leader of the Labour Party, his tenure has expired and the election he conducted in India without return him as the leader of the Labour Party is not being recognized by INEC because INEC did not attend that convention and that convention did not meet the guideline as stipulated by the Electoral Act of INEC. And Julius Abure was aware of the position of the law. But you know, ever since Olumide Abata won the primary as the Labour Party gubernatorial candidate, Olumide Abata and his National Working Committee, they have not shown any work. They have not identified with Olumide Abata. They have not campaigned with him. They have not shown solidarity. Even the Labour Party official Twitter account that was created when Peter Obi came on board to the Labour Party have not been used to campaign for Olumide Abata. Go through that handle, you will not see a single tweet from that handle supporting Olumida Abata. This shows you how desperate these people were to destroy the Labour Party. However, everything has changed when that stakeholder meeting was held in Abia State and Nenadi Usman was inaugurated as the leader of the transition committee. Her name has been sent to INEC 
Einek accepted her as the leader of the Labour Party, the interim leader of the Labour Party, and a new list has been submitted to Einek, and that list was accepted by Einek. So it means that if Alex Oti and Peter Robi did not intervene in the crisis of the Labour Party, the Labour Party would have gone to that election with that agent. Imagine how chaotic it would have been to go into an election without an agent. That means all your vote would have been stolen by PDP and APC. Of course, they are looking for every means possible to steal and rig the election. This would have been catastrophic. And Julius Abure was watching all this unfold in his very eyes without doing anything to stop it. I think we don't have anything to worry about regarding that issue as it has been solved so far and Nina the Usman has been moving to do the right thing. She has been given the responsibility to conduct an expansive convention and that is a 120 days grace period. So in no distant time you are going to see a new look Labour Party and I'm very very optimistic that this will reposition Labour Party to that great party we all admire, that great party we all want. I saw the work, the level of work that Obedient put into the Labour Party in the 2023 general election. Proud to that election, Labour Party was just one of that party that was there, party that was being used as a place for that party, even though they claim to have been there for the past 20 years. The level of visibility that the Obedient and Mr. Pitobi gave to the Labour Party is such that she has never experienced or seen in her life before. So that was the reason why Obedient were telling Mr. P2B, leave Labour Party when this crisis was going on, go and get another party. We will ensure that we give this same visibility we've given to the Labour Party to your new party. But I understand the position of Mr. Peter Obi. Creating a new political party was not going to be an easy tax. You also have to understand that when you create a new political party, it is the same set of Nigerians that are in Labour Party that will also run that same political party. So you don't run away from the problem. All you need to do is to stay handle and solve the problem. Just like Mr. Peter B will always say, he did not sack one single civil servant in the civil service. He used the same set of people that have been there before, but he changed the system. He changed their modus operandum. He changed whatever they were doing and ensured that they follow a new path they follow a new direction and they all followed him so this is what mr p2b is trying to do when you give the people the right things to do the right path to follow they will follow you that's what mr p2b was hoping to do ensure that they give the labor party a new direction and a new path once that direction and new path is being cutted the people will follow through and of course, when everything is done and dusted, even these same people who have been trying to destroy the Labour Party can equally still join the Labour Party. Of course, they can still be instrumental in driving the course of the Labour Party. What they are going to do now, they are going to follow a new rule, new set of guidelines. They are going to work with the constitution of the new Labour Party. They are going to be working under a new leader and we are going to have a very great party. I am very optimistic that this is going to produce a positive result for the Labour Party. Come 2027 general election, we are going to go into that election with so much confidence. We had so many issues in 2023 while we were conducting the election. Labour Party did not really work as a party to ensure that Mr. Peter B win that election. There was too many distractions. Some of them were even working for other political parties. For instance, in some southwest state, the Labour Party was being used to work for the APC. Even in some parts in the north, you saw how the gubernatorial candidate in Kanu State stepped down just a few weeks to the general election and supported Bola Tinibu and the APC. Of course, this was possible because a proper convention was not conducted in 2023. Most people were just selected. Most people joined the party because they saw the wave that Mr. Peter B brought into the party. Most people came from other political parties and joined the Labour Party. So they were not doing it for the love of Mr. Peter B or the love of the party. They were doing it for their own personal, selfish aggrandizement. But in 2027, I am sure a proper convention will be conducted that we only produce people that are loyal to the Labour Party, people that are loyal to the cause and ideas of Mr. Peter Robi, people that are loyal to a new Nigeria, people that want to move Nigeria from consumption to production. That is the kind of election we are going to experience in 2027 and I can't wait for that because it's going to be a very, very massive convention and definitely Mr. Peter B is going to win that election. Trust me, he's going to win that election. Whatever they did in 2023, it's not going to happen again. That manipulation they did in 2023 will not occur again in 2027. So I'm happy with this new found Labour Party, this new course of action they are taking 
and I'm hoping that it will be for the best and betterment of all and Nigeria at large. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.